Hey, RP Plus, RPU, welcome back. Dr. James Hoffman again, and you are unfortunately staring at the same screen. What the hell? Why are we still doing this? Well, we haven't quite finished up. So I wanted to go through a few more things with you on setting up this annual plan. Today, what I'm kind of hoping to go through is some kind of basics of exercise selection. This is something that I think people get wrong a lot for very different reasons, not always the same reasons. One reason that people get this wrong is because they don't put much thought into it at all, which frankly is kind of a lesser offense, believe it or not. I know that might sound weird, but a lot of the times people will get through this part of their annual plan and they'll just kind of be just over it, right? And they're just like, all right, I've done all this work. I'm ready just to, to get, get going. And that's understandable. So they'll just say, okay, we're doing some squats and some bench presses, you know, and some deadlifts and stuff here or there. And they don't really put much thought into it, which is not great, but not terrible. Another problem that people can run into is that sometimes they will put too much thought into it, believe it or not. And I think we've all kind of found ourselves there where we kind of have that paralysis by analysis where we're looking at the same mesocycle for like 30 minutes trying to figure out which exercise would really be best there. Well, the reality is it probably doesn't matter all that much. The actual effect size of what exercises we choose, you know, is kind of inconsequential to a point. Now, there is a benefit to doing it the right way, and that's what I'm going to give you some food for thought with uh, today. But keep in mind, right, what we're talking about is probably within like a 5% margin of effect. So definitely notable, definitely worth pursuing. But, you know, the difference between a close stand squat and a high bar squat or a low bar squat, you know, as long as the general sets, it reps, intensities, MEVs, MRVs, all of those things are accounted for, we're probably going to be in pretty good shape. If we haven't accounted for those things ahead of time, we're going to be in bad shape. So we have the same annual plan that we've been kind of playing around with. And I just wanted to go back and look at it really quick. Most of you hopefully have seen it before. And one thing I just wanted to reiterate, and we're going to do as written, but one thing I just wanted to reiterate, and I know I mentioned this on the previous videos, but if we're doing an annual plan for an athlete, so what we have here is a progression of hypertrophy one, hypertrophy two, which was our metabolite phase, and then we moved into our strength, our maximum strength and power, and then power and speed, right, which is totally fine. One thing I just want to remind you, and I want to give you some food for thought, the way we did this was our hypertrophy one was kind of our traditional three by 10, four by 10, five by 10, you know, kind of thing. No, nothing big surprise there. Uh, there it is off to a good start. We did our hypertrophy two and we did a metabolite phase. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up again is because if you're working in strength power sport, there is a good argument, which might not be entirely true, but I think a very good theoretical argument at the least, saying, you know, metabolite training, or at least like a whole metabolite mesocycle, may not be the best bang for your buck, simply because it favors more slow twitch characteristics. And for our strength and power athletes, generally we want to do our fast twitch stuff, which means we want the intensities to be a little bit higher. Um, we're going to emphasize more of the force and velocity characteristics, less of the metabolite accumulation kind of stuff. We did it anyway. If I was to do this again, what I would also do is maybe just change it a little bit. I like this example, so we're going to stick with it. But what I would also consider doing is making this hypertrophy one the same. Maybe make it like three by eight as a start and then progress like three by eight, four by eight, five by eight, something like that. And I would make this three, uh, the second hypertrophy, not a metabolite phase. If it was, if it was just like strictly for like a, a track and field athlete or like a bobsled athlete where it was really just strength and power, probably wouldn't do this unless they were really, really lagging behind in the LBM. And we were actually putting speed and power characteristics on the back burner for like upwards of a year or two. That would be really the only scenario that I think that would be appropriate. So what I would do then is just make this kind of more of our high volume, like our three by eight to 12. So something like three by 10, three by 12, something like that, plenty of rest time and really emphasize the intensity, uh, less of the like short rest, one minute rest kind of stuff, super, super high reps. We don't need to do that necessarily, but let's just go with it. And cause this is what we did. And I think it's still a good example. The reason why that's also important is because over here, when we transition to the basic strength block, we have to actually start higher on the higher end of strength. So this is right in the gray area between strength and hypertrophy, right? Because the reps were so high in this hypertrophy two block. If this was something more like three by 10, what we could actually do is make this basic strength block, you know, like three by fives, which will make the transition into maximal strength really, really smooth and easy. So we still did a good job. We still have like three by eight here. 
we still have a bit of a progression. And again, these progressions will be dependent upon the individual's MRVs and MEVs and all that stuff, right? Um, however, going from eights to threes is still going to be a bit of a rough, a rough transition. So what we might actually expect is if we were being really, really nitpicky, we were counting for MEVs and stuff as well. This might be like the starting sets might be like two or one and then maybe only progressing up to like three because the intensity jump is so high and that is something that you just have to kind of guess and check with your individual clients and see what their tolerance is once you have a pretty good idea of what their mevs and mrvs are then you can individualize this now again this is a gross um, simplification of what this might be like right so we don't necessarily um take this at face value where we say, okay, here's the set progression I'm going to do. Here's the intensity progression I'm going to do. Maybe that might be what you do. This is just kind of a gross overview to kind of help get you started. So anyways, let's get on with today's topic. So what we're going to do is start actually filling in kind of our microcycle strategies, our week to weeks, our exercise selections for some of these phases. Now, what I want you to think about when we're doing this is kind of three big things. We'll actually just make a little list here just because you have to been, you've been listening to me talk already, so might as well get something down. One, the first thing we want to make sure is that our exercise selection matches the actual goal of the phase that we're in. So it matches the goal of the training phase, right? That means we should choose exercises which will allow us to express the things that we are trying to train for. So, for example... If I was to be in a, in a strength phase, I would want to pick an exercise that would allow me to express really, really high forces. A poor example of that might be doing like a one arm dumbbell bench press. Why? Well, simply because I'm not able to exert as much force had I just done like a medium grip or even like a close grip barbell bench press. The amount of force that I can generate through that exercise is way higher. Therefore, it's probably more appropriate for my strength phase. On the other hand, if I was doing a hypertrophy phase, I'd probably want something that I could use a moderate load with, but I could get a really, really big range of motion so that I can do a lot of actual mechanical work to make that muscle bigger. So in that case, a dumbbell bench press might actually be a pretty good idea. So I want to make sure the exercise selection matches the goal of the training phase, which is something I think a lot of people have a hard time wrapping their brain around, so we're going to work on it. Number two, I want to phase potentiate my exercises across each mesocycle. What does that mean? Well, we know that fitness characteristics will face potentiate. And part one said that our exercise selection should be representative of whatever fitness that we're training for for that particular phase. So what that means is I'm actually going to be thinking about how my exercises will potentially be transitioning as we go across mesocycles. Sometimes they might not transition at all. Sometimes they will. So we want to be thinking about, OK, I'm going to have a progression for any given muscle group, right? So maybe for chest, maybe for quads, maybe for posterior chain, maybe for back, any of those things, right? So we're gonna have some type of progression as we move across the training plan and we get closer and closer to competition. Another thing we wanna think about is of course, heavy and light. We never are always doing heavy, heavy, heavy all the time. There's probably gonna be some light variations in there and that's completely normal. Some days we might have heavy on certain things like heavy legs and then at the end of the heavy leg session we might also include a light push and then come back to a heavy push later in the week. So we're not always thinking everything is always super crazy high intensity maximal effort. Some things might be, other things might not be and that's perfectly okay. And then last and certainly not least, and this is something that I have been maybe not always, excuse me, let me rephrase, maybe I haven't always done the best job, and it's something I'm trying to do a little bit better of a job more recently, and I'm having a lot of success in uh, my programs for my clients and for myself as well, and that is this kind of idea of momentum, which is really more of just kind of, I, I would say, there's some physiological aspects of it, certainly. I think a lot of it is neuromuscular, and really what momentum is saying is, you kind of get into a groove on certain movements, right? Some things, in the first example that I think will make a lot of sense to, for, for those of you who have done low bar squats before, low bar squats are one of those really shitty, awkward movements where the first week or two weeks that you do it, you're getting not much out of it because you kind of have to re-familiarize yourself with the technique and it's horribly awkward and it's painful and you kind of have to spend some time on it before you get into a, a uh, get to a point where you're like, man, I actually felt really good from that training session. I felt like I got a, a really good lift. 
So, you know, with low bar squats, I actually think it takes like two to three mesocycles to really, really get some good momentum on that lift to the point where you can actually achieve what you're trying to achieve. A lot of that is just neuromuscular and technique and movement coordination kind of based, and that's perfectly okay. So one thing we want to consider is not necessarily using too much variation. Now, we know that using variation in exercise selection will effectively lower the MEV of some of those movements on the next mesocycle, but at the same time, we might actually lose some momentum on some of those. So what I want to do is actually carry over a couple exercises here or there, not for too long, I'm not saying for more than three mesocycles, but there might be some movements where in one way, shape, or form, I might be trying to carry them through so that I can actually make a lot of progress on that particular movement and really get my athletes strong at that particular movement. The question is, how can I incorporate this in here while still doing a good job of all my different training principles like variation directed adaptation, face potentiation, all that stuff. So these are generally the things that I'm going to be thinking about when we're actually doing our exercise selection. So we want to make sure the exercise matches the training goal of whatever mesocycle we're in. We're going to phase potentiate, just like we did with fitness characteristics. I'm going to make good use of heavy and light. I'm not always going to be doing heavy stuff. There's going to be some light days built into that. And I'm going to try and sneak in some momentum along the way. So what I essentially do do for myself, and I'm just going to kind of make some notes here, and I hope you guys can follow along. What I usually like to think about is having kind of a progression of each general muscle group, right? So we're going to have some things that are like hypertrophy. I'm going to do this over here, actually, so I can spread these out. So I know I have some things that are kind of handy in my, hyper <laughs> handy in my hypertrophy handbag. I have some that are good in my strength handbag, right? Maybe sometimes I might differentiate for max strength just to be nitpicky. And then I also have some that I might use, you know, for like power and speed. So something like this, right? Now, you don't have to do this, but I think it's a good thought experiment for yourself to do. And this will actually make your life a lot easier when you do this again later. So then what you can actually do is actually make, okay, like I have a little bit of progressions here that I can work with. Um, Sorry, I'm spacing out a little bit. We'll do posterior chain. Um, and maybe we can do something like, you know, overhead. It doesn't have to be those categories, but we're just doing this to keep it nice and simple. So what are some good exercises that might be good for quads during a hypertrophy phase? Well, certainly any, any quad dominant movement is a good choice, right? But there might be some that I might benefit from a little bit more. So why don't we just throw some on here? I'm going to say front squat. I'm going to say, oops, hack squat, leg press, oops, close stance, squat, right? Does that mean that high bar squats wouldn't work there? No, of course they would. Absolutely would. But I might be reserving those for a later phase later on. Sorry, this is getting kind of wide. So what about for a strength phase? What would be a good exercise choice during a strength phase? Well, generally any of our squatting movements, but some might be a little bit better than others. Generally for our strength phase, we're going to be sticking with primarily high bar squat and probably, no surprise here, we'll just call this low bar squat, right? For maximum strength, probably generally the same, right? So we can use our high bar squats and low bar squats for both strength and maximal strength. For power and speed, are we going to use that same progression of high bar squat, low bar squat? Maybe not, but we might do some are some speed squats, which are kind of funny if you've never seen those before. And this is where we might actually start kind of deviating from our traditional path. And we might do some things like counter movement jumps or other plyometric type exercises. So here we have exercises with huge ability to load the quadriceps, big range of motion, and the ability to achieve really, really high peripheral volume loads on the quads, right? So none of these are really going to crap your back out too bad, with the exception of maybe doing like the front squats, which is actually in a general preparatory phase would be good because you get a lot of trunk work in there too, but the loads are so light, it's very unlikely that you will really be crapping out your lower back because if the person is used to doing things like Back squats and deadlifts, probably not much of an issue. So we can actually get quite a lot of quad work here and a pretty big volume of quad work without having too much like systemic fatigue, which is great. As we transition into strength, right, we need to be able to express high forces. And the best way to do that is probably going to be through our high bar squat and low bar squat variations. Same thing for maximal strength. And then for maximal strength, depending on if there's a need for low bar squat. Now, 
you don't have to agree with me on this. And I know some people will get really, really butthurt about the low bar squat issue. My personal opinion, I have been getting further and further away from programming a lot of low bar squats with my athletes simply because it's awkward. And it requires a lot of momentum time to actually get into a good groove. So, you know, transitioning them for like one mesocycle of low bar squat during a maximal strength phase makes sense on paper. But when you actually have them do it, they don't really get as much out of it as they could unless they actually have like two or three mesocycles of technique uh, reinforcement to really get that maximal strength. So that's my opinion. So I've been using high bar squats a lot more consistently and I've been having a lot of success with that. If you're dealing with people who do powerlifting or if you can make a case in your needs analysis that says low bar squat might be a good choice, that's perfectly fine too. I'm just giving you my personal opinion. So for me, I kind of deviate a little bit further away from low bar squat, except for powerlifting. Uh, and if I have powerlifters, I certainly program it in there to make sure that they're good at it. And then as we move into power and speed, right, we're using things where we can emphasize the movement characteristics. So speed squats, where we do a full high bar squat, but we come up all the way up on our tiptoes as if we were trying to jump. The loads are very, very light and the movement speed is emphasized. Counter movement jumps is basically your traditional jump as high as you can. Uh, and then any other plyometric exercise, which kind of has that jumping and squatting type movement. So here again, we have choices that make the muscle really good options for gaining and maintaining muscle mass under bad energy conditions. We have good choices for high force output, and we have good choices for high power and speed output. We can do the same kind of thing over here with push, right? So why don't we just have some fun? We can say cambered bar bench, dumbbell bench, right? F DB flies, stuff like that really really good what are going to be our main strength variants for our, our push movements it's going to be our barbell bench press excuse me barbell bench press variations right that can include things like incline close grip wide grip when we get into maximal strength it's pretty much going to be flat barbell bench press right right not much choice there and if we want to do some power and speed we can do some like bar throws um plyo push-ups and any number of other exercises. These are just a couple, right? So please don't take this as an all-inclusive list. It is by no means all-inclusive. It's just meant to kind of illustrate my point. Okay, so for posterior chain, what are some good hypertrophy movements? Well, hot damn, do I love deficit deadlifts. That's a great option. The load is very moderate, and the range of motion is humongous, so it's a really, really good choice. I really like straight leg deadlifts, stuff like that. Um, can we do some other things like 45 degree back raise? You bet. Can we do some like glute ham raises? You bet. Any of those are really good choices. And even things like good mornings, right? Stuff like that. Absolutely. As we transition into strength, what are going to be probably our big choices for posterior chain? It's going to be mostly our deadlift variations and usually ones that are not done from a deficit, right? So this is going to be like deadlift, straight leg deadlift. And I would even say like good mornings um, to a degree for like as a lighter strength-based movement absolutely and then what's going to be our big probably our big one here for maximum strength well whatever your normal either conventional or sumo pull deadlift is going to be the big maximal strength one right power and speed we're going to actually probably see some of our weightlifting movements come in here so we're going to see weightlifting derivatives from the floor um things like our clean poles stuff like that and then Actually, a lot of kind of our sport training, like sprinting and stuff like that, will actually start to cover a lot of that stuff for us, too, which is great. And then overhead pressing stuff, what do we see in the beginning? Well, certainly things like upright rows, dumbbell, overhead pressing, you know, behind the neck pressing, stuff like that. Definitely going to be really, really good for building up those delts. Um, the upright rows maybe not as good for the... Uh, because it kind of has an antagonist component, but it still trains the same muscle groups. But if we're really focusing on overhead, I would say like our dumbbell overhead pressing, behind the neck pressing, uh, even like seated pressing uh, is going to be really, really good. As we move into strength, we're probably going to be doing like our standard kind of barbell overhead press variations, like our from the front or from the back. When we get into maximum strength, usually we start seeing things like push press, push jerk, something like that. Um, and then power and speed. Actually, I spoke, I got ahead of myself. Let's say push jerk over here. And then we'll say, uh, you know, jerk variations, tosses, stuff like that. So 
Why am I going through all this? Well, this is just meant to kind of illustrate an idea of phase potentiation and variation. So when I'm in these hypertrophy phases, here's just some good exercises for me to kind of play around with, and then I can gain the benefit of variation later on, potentially, as I go through this. So I'm going to keep going, and let's keep rocking and rolling on this. Unfortunately, if you can hear that my doorbell is ringing, that person's going to have to wait tough nuggets. All right, so let's go through our hypertrophy phase here. So this first one, what we're going to have to figure out are some progressions, right? If we're doing a hypertrophy phase, it's very likely that we're going to be training probably somewhere around five days per week, maybe upwards of six. That's perfectly fine. So we're going to have probably something like day one, day two, day three, day four. And you can do this however you want. I'm just doing this kind of quick and dirty just so you can see my thought process. So let's take a look. Sorry, something was distracting me. I could hear, hear people upstairs in my house. Okay, so the first one, we're going to probably have some type of leg day. So what I like to usually do is have a quad emphasized leg day and a posterior chain emphasized leg day. You can do that however you see fit. So the way that I'm going to set this up is pretty simple. We're going to have some quad movements in here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have some front squats, some down sets, maybe a hamstring movement, like a 45 degree back raise, something like that. And if we want, we could add something else. If you're, uh, if you're some relatively new athlete, like if they're a beginner, that might be good. You might be basically done. If they're more intermediate, you might want to add another quad movement. You can sneak another one in there, like a hack squat or a leg press. So maybe we'll sneak that one in there just to say that we're working with an intermediate here. And then potentially if you wanted to add some core work or something like that, that would be perfectly fine, right? Day two, we can basically have like an upper body push or an upper body pull, depending on how well we're managing fatigue and how, you know, our athlete tolerates this stuff. So let's just have fun and let's just call this push. So here, what we might actually be doing is some dumbbell bench press, right? Again, maybe some down sets, maybe some dumbbell flies, nothing too crazy. Or actually, let's save those dumbbell flies for another day. Let's do some seated dumbbell overhead press, something like that. And if we want to add a tricep movement, tricep or bicep movement, whatever, no big deal, right? Okay, day three, what we're probably going to do is some upper body pull. So what I like to do here is maybe we'll do some vertical pulls. So what I would say is maybe like our pull, uh, upper pull down variation. So maybe we'll do some underhand pull downs or actually, you know, let's have some fun. Maybe we'll do some assisted underhand pull ups and then we could do some underhand pull downs as some down sets. Then maybe we'll do some like two arm dumbbell row as our shoulder retraction uh, exercise variant. And then of course, if we want to add a bi or, you know, uh, posterior delts or something. One of those movements, that'd be perfectly fine. So actually, you know what? Now that I'm looking at this, let's flip-flop these because I think this would make more sense, to be honest. Sometimes it's tough doing those back days before another leg day. So let's do it like this. So now we've come back to legs. So what are some things that we can do here? Well, we're going to probably be working our posterior chain movement. So maybe we'll do some deficit deadlift, something like that. Maybe some dumbbell walking lunge, something like that. <laughs> walking loon. That's what I feel like sometimes, walking loon. I actually kind of feel like Bob Ross while I'm doing this a little bit. You know what I mean? You guys are like watching me paint my picture, and it's beautiful. Okay, dumbbell walking lunge. So now is kind of one of those times where I also like to think about is there a creative way of me generating some momentum? And I like to do this with some of my lighter exercises. So you can see like, okay, I've definitely emphasized deficit deadlifts on this day. I've definitely emphasized front squats on this day, right? Like no doubt. What I also have are some other movements towards the end, right? Like hack squats might come back and help me generate some momentum in my next phase. I have lunges here. And what I also might want to think about doing is maybe having like a leg press or something in here so I can strategically use this on the next phase. Because what phase is coming up next? Do you remember? It's that metabolite phase. So we have to make sure that we're also thinking about what's going on in that next mesocycle, not just what's going on in this mesocycle. And then if we want to have some more fun, like if that was a beginner, that's done. If it's an intermediate, we might add something like a chest elevated glute bridge or something, whatever, you know, have some fun with it. Okay. Next, what we'll have is our last day. And this will probably be more of like an upper body combination. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can hear my cat Piccolo. He's helping us out right now. Hey buddy, he's interfering. 
Okay, so now we're going to have day five, and that's going to be probably a combination of upper body kind of stuff. So what we're going to have here is some maybe some lighter variations on stuff that we did. So what we might do here is maybe start off with some behind the neck press. Maybe we can do some um, uh, one arm, oops, arm dumbbell rows, and I'm doing this kind of strategically so that I might be able to generate some momentum in this next phase. Maybe some incline chest fly, something like that. And then I would say maybe another push or pull of your choice, or you could say, you know, arms, basically something like that. Is it 100% perfect? No. What's perfect is based on the individual needs analysis for your person, right? But this is just an example of what a five-day split might look like, right? So now what we need to do is progress a little bit as we move into hypertrophy too. So now we went from doing 3x10, 4x10. Now we're doing like 4x15, 5x15-ish, something like that, right? So this is going to be rough. Now, you might be thinking like, well, I watched all your other videos and you said, well, the basics, the barbell, dumbbell movements should generally be the priority. And that is absolutely true. However, if you've never done this style of training before, it's very, very difficult to actually do like four by 15 in a back squat or something like that. What ends up happening is like systemic fatigue will just happen first before like peripheral fatigue will, or something like your back will just kind of give out. So this is one of those times where it's actually probably a good idea to think about using some creative exercise variations. So here, what I might actually do is use some of the exercises that I've gained some momentum on before, right? So I had some other things in here like hack squats and leg presses, which actually might fit this particular phase very well. And I have a little bit of familiarity with these. So it's like, I don't have to start from square one. I have a pretty good idea of where I stand and my athlete is pretty familiarized with that movement already. So that makes it a good example of something that I can carry on. It was a lesser exercise before. I'm generating some momentum by doing it throughout the mesocycle. Now I can actually use this as a primary in this particular mesocycle. So we might actually emphasize like the hack squat, leg press, something like that, right? And then maybe just switch up some of the other movements like the hamstring movements if we want to. I would say um, it might be good to do some, either if we wanted to go all in on the metabolite phase, we could do some like seated hamstring or seated or lying hamstring curl. So maybe like lying ham curl, right? And then if we wanted to do some like knee extension at the end, top it off, that would be like our quad base day. And that's perfectly fine. What about over here? Well, what can we do on, what did we have first? We had kind of our pull day, right? So now we're going to have probably a whole bunch of underhand pull downs, right? Who's probably not going to be able to do all of those <laughs> pull-ups, unless they're really good at pull-ups. If they, even assisted pull-ups, I don't know about you guys, but assisted pull-ups for me, I get tired real quick. Uh, so I don't think that's going to be much of an option. So pull downs is probably going to be a pretty good choice. We can maintain some of the momentum with things like the two arm dumbbell row. It's not going to be super brutal for them to maintain that technique. And then maybe we can add something like a cable row on top of it. And if we want to add some like arm movements or another delt movement to complement, what do we do over here? Yeah, by our posterior delt, I would basically just have your choice of like a dumbbell or a cable type movement that you can really blast out for a lot of volume, right? Something like that. What about over here? Hmm. Okay, so over here we did dumbbell bench press. Can we actually do the same thing? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. So we can actually just carry on some of the momentum over here. Our uh, person's familiarized with this. We're going to do some dumbbell bench, maybe some downsets, something like that. Um, and then we're probably going to have a hard time really, really pumping out a lot of those overhead pressing movements. So maybe we'll do something like lateral raise really train the delts and then again maybe like a try or buy of our choice something like that okay so in this case we didn't really do anything crazy we still have a good movement it's not like the barbell like, i don't know if you've ever tried to do sets of 15 with the barbell it just you kind of just get crapped out sooner or later you can do this and manage this with the dumbbells and actually here let's have some fun let's change this up so we said dumbbell bench press for one why don't we actually just do like machine chest press machine chest press <laughs> You guys like my notations here? It doesn't make any damn sense. So here we did dumbbell bench press. We got probably pretty fatigued from that. Once our technique is kind of degraded, we did like four or five by 15. It's going to be really, really hard to do any free weights. We can switch to something like a machine. We can still get a ton of resistance. We can still get a pretty good amount of muscle activation. And we don't have any risk of uh, kind of dropping it on our head or anything like that, right? So that's totally cool. 
Ooh, now we get into that weird area. What about doing this kind of stuff? Well, you know, personally, in my opinion, doing like the super, super high rep deadlifts is pretty rough. So one thing that you can do is actually just tone down the number of reps a little bit specifically for this movement. But you could also choose exercise variants that are just inherently less hard in this case. So like hex bar deadlift is usually pretty agreeable to most people. It keeps you in a nice centered position and it's not super, super exhausting on your, your uh, postural muscles. So that might be a good choice here. We also, let's see if we can carry anything over from the last one, right? We had some lunges. Lunges for that many reps is going to be really, really rough. What we can do here is maybe do some more of those glute bridges. And then what I would actually think about doing now is including a light, deliberately light, paw squat. And this might kind of stand out a little bit, but basically between these two, I mean, a person's going to be pretty wrecked at this point. So now what I'm going to think about is can I actually start strategically including an exercise that might help me a little bit later because what's going to happen next right so we're again we're thinking about not just what we're doing right now but we're also thinking about what am i doing next well next i got basic strength so you better believe that some regular squatting is either coming up next or it's right around the corner right so after doing hack squats and leg presses for a mesocycle Trying to go back to doing regular back squats is going to be really, really rough. So what I'm doing is actually strategically placing this paw squat in there. It's light. They might not be getting, maybe we'll say they just do like 10 or something like that. It's meant to be light. Um, they're not going to be doing like 20 reps on this. And 20 reps of paw squat would be stupid anyway. But basically we're doing this to maintain some technique and familiarity with the back squatting movement so that when we transition eventually to basic strength or maximal strength, they will still be semi-familiar with that movement and it won't be as brutal. So that's a strategic use of face potentiation and momentum here, right? Over here, when we get to day five, we kind of have our combo days. Again, can we do something that we've already done? Yeah, this might be a good time, maybe just now that we're nice and fresh, maybe do some dumbbell overhead pressing, right? So we have a little bit of momentum from that last one. We can manage that for a little while without being too crazy. What are some other things that we can do? Well, let's see what we did in the first one over here, right? We did some one-arm rows, we did some inclined chest flies, we did some arms, something like that, right? So if we were to try and find something that we could do it for our... Uh, one arm row variant over here we could actually either keep the one arm row or i would say we could also use something like i'm a big fan of the uh cables during this phase because you can do machine stuff and really just blast and blast and blast them so maybe we'll do something like cable row over here we might do something uh, like a chest movement even something light like a push-up i mean for short rests and high reps like that it, you'll get the desired effect and then what did we finish off with over here i don't remember oh arm so we can have like our arm of choice over here okay so you see what we did? So we kind of have a bit of a progression. In this case, we kind of have a backwards progression. So normally we go from, like, as we go from hypertrophy to strength to max strength and power, we kind of have a progression of, like, weak movements to stronger movements as we go. This one was kind of backwards. So we actually had, like, relatively, I don't want to say strong, but stronger movements. And then we transitioned you uh, generally weaker movements, with the exception of some of these, right? Some of them stayed the same because they were already kind of a weaker movement to start. That's, that's perfectly fine. So we have kind of an interesting progression. Now, as we move into basic strength, now we have some crazy stuff that's going to happen. So let's go back to my cheat sheet over here, right? What did we say were good exercise variants? Well, our list is significantly shorter than it was for hypertrophy, yeah? So what are we going to do over here? Well, here is kind of like our main variants that we're probably going to be working with. So let's have some fun. So instead of doing five days per week when we transition to basic strength we have to actually reduce the training volume a little bit and we know that things like tactics and uh sports skills are going to start becoming increasing uh in volume so what we're probably going to see is a decrease in total volume certainly and then also a decrease in frequency of our weight training right so no surprise our mevs and mrvs are going to go down for basic strength as the intensity of exercise goes up meaning we can't do as much on the top end but we also benefit from less on the bottom end so what do we have here well now we're probably going to have kind of a combo day where we're going to do some legs and some upper body generally on the same day and that's perfectly okay so what are we going to start here well what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually say all right what we're going to start with is some um, high bar squat 
Now, luckily, it's, this is going to be rough, right? We're going to add weight, and it's an exercise we haven't practiced a whole lot, but we did do some of it. We maintained some basic uh, squatting skills over here, and we did do some hack squats, so it won't be terrible. We'll do some down sets, maybe some good mornings, and then what I would do is also include a light upper body push. So in this case, maybe we did some incline, close grip, bench press, which is a new movement for us, right? So what we could also do, and that would be, this would be more of like, I guess, more of like a physique style split. So actually, why don't we just keep it simple? Why don't we just say, you know what? We're doing some incline bench press, just medium grip, nothing too crazy. So we did some incline flies over here. Now we're transitioning to strength. Now, instead of doing flies, we're doing presses, right? So that's that day. Day two, we're going to have a similar setup. We're going to probably do our heavy pulls. Now, it might be good to actually start including some weightlifting derivatives on some of these days. So it might be good to include some maybe mid-thigh pulls or something like that. But after that, we're probably going to start seeing maybe some like underhand or overhand, uh, or maybe even like parallel grip. We'll just put, uh, we'll just do underhand for now. Underhand uh, pull-ups. We're probably going to want to have some type of retraction movement, right? So maybe we'll have kind of like um, uh, an underhand easy row, something like that. And then it's probably not a bad idea to have something like maybe like an upright row barbell for the shoulders, something like that. So are they probably going to be blasting eight reps on these mid-thigh pulls? Hell no. I hope you caught that. We're going to actually keep this one in for five. And why are we introducing weightlifting movements here? Well, are we actually training for power no but what i need to do is generate some momentum again i need to generate some technical familiarity blah, 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 familiarity with this movement so that when they transition to this phase and they're actually doing more weightlifting stuff they have some familiar with that second pull derivative right they have some idea of what that's supposed to be like and now here they're familiarizing themselves with it here they're actually training it see the difference so i did that strategically day three we're probably going to switch to kind of like our base uh, movement. So let's just um, have some fun. We'll just do a little bit. Maybe we said, okay, today we're going to do close grip barbell bench press, some down sets, maybe seated barbell overhead press. So instead of doing seated dumbbell, maybe we switch to seated barbell, something like that. And then if we wanted to have an arm movement in there, that's totally fine, right? And then last but not least, assuming our person's recovered. Now, depending on how your athlete recovers you might consider flip-flopping maybe day three or day four depending on you know with males sometimes they uh they need a little bit uh more recovery time so it might be like this and then they have like two whole recovery days off before they train legs again with females sometimes you can split them up um, like legs upper legs upper because they just bounce back quicker than males so it depends on how you your athlete responds right so either way is fine uh this is just how i'm doing it for an example so just keep that in mind it doesn't have to be this it could you know you could you could split it even and out a little bit if we wanted to so we had quad legs light push uh heavy pull heavy push now we're going to do our heavy posterior chain movement. So what's probably going to be a good one here? Well, I think something like our deadlift or anything similar, even just like straight leg deadlift. Let's do straight leg deadlift since we haven't really done a whole lot of deadlifting. We'll do straight leg deadlift. Maybe we'll do a um, lighter high bar squat variation. Or if we're trying to be a little strategic, what I might actually consider doing is doing a light low bar squat. Uh oh what's that all about oh my god i have no idea okay and that's actually might be useful for me to generate some momentum when i actually move into this phase which might be pretty helpful so we'll see um so i got some high bar squats here right that's good i'm doing some low bar squats now i'm saying this is light meaning it's not at like true overload uh, low bar squat weight that I would do if I was starting with low bar squat, right? So you obviously you did some straight leg deadlifts and then you did some low bar squats. It's going to be a little bit less. And the person's not as familiar with this movement. Their MEV is low. So this is going to be somewhat light. And if we want to include another posterior chain movement in here, for example, if we wanted to do like a barbell lunge and really work on the glutes, something like that, that would be fine, right? So here's just an example of what that might look like. Does it have to be exactly this? No. But we can see there's definitely a transition in our movements as we went into strength, right? So we shortened up the range of motion on some of these things. We actually inc increased the force output on a lot of these movements, right? Oh, I didn't even think of this. I oh, will save. We'll s actually, I just had an epiphany. So what we're going to actually do here 
We said seated barbell overhead press, but let's actually do stand overhead press. I forgot what we're doing next, right? So we could say standing overhead press, and then when we eventually transition over here to max strength and power, we can include something like a push press or a push jerk or something like that. Now, what I would not recommend doing is going from this metabolite phase and doing dump seated dumbbell like overhead pressing like this and then immediately going well he said push press was on this list right so let's put push press in there no that's probably not a good idea you probably want to have some kind of like overhead pressing first and then moving into like compound pressing like push presses and push jerks something like that so we didn't we're not going to do that so let's just say we did barbell here there's still a good progression right again remember when i said in the beginning of our talk if it was a pure strength power athlete, I might have done this a little differently, and that is true. And that would be an example. So over here, we would have done some strict overhead pressing. When we got to here, we would have done some push pressing, and then when we got to here, we would have done some push jerks. So in, in this one, we're basically lagging behind a little bit, right? So we're doing some overhead pressing here, and we look pretty good, right? Now, as we go through into our max strength and power phase, we again might actually see a reduction in our total training uh, volume, certainly from the increase in intensity and a reduction probably in the frequency of training as well. So we might actually go down to like three days per week. And this is where things can get a little bit funky, right? So if we wanted to um, do a three-day split, it might be something like this. Now, when you do, you know, less than four, you kind of have to get creative where we have to have some overloading movements. Oh, did I even finish this one over here? I didn't even finish this one. Duh. So now I need to have um, another pull movement. So again, I had like a heavy pull here. I need to have a light pull here. Man, see, I'm getting ahead of myself. I should be paying attention to what I'm actually doing. Instead, I got people ringing my doorbell, my cat going crazy, and you can probably hear my phone going crazy. This is a nutty session. Okay, so last but not least, maybe we had something like parallel grip pull-ups. Okay, that makes sense to me. So here we can see heavy quads, light push, heavy pull, heavy push, heavy posterior chain, light pull. Nothing too crazy there. Okay, so now, now as we get to our three day, we might have to actually see a lot more total body stuff. And this is where we're really gonna have to kind of think about having a heavy light split. So this is kind of our general plan. And then within that, there's gonna be some variation in how we do this. So keep in mind, don't take this to be entirely literally because we're gonna have to play around with this a little bit. So what's not a bad idea, is to have kind of a, an emphasis days, an emphasis on certain days. So as we move into max strength and power, what might not be a bad idea is to have another weightlifting derivative, you know, your choice based on your needs analysis. For our squatting movements, we might do something like a low bar squat. And then we might have just kind of uh, basically a priority or like a needs basis for a lot of these things. So our low bar squat's gonna be kind of like our heavy movement that we do that day. We're going to have probably a push and a pull that we have to hit as well. And then how we set that up is going to be based on how you want to prioritize it. So what we might do over here is have like a uh, close grip bench press or something like a uh, medium grip or close grip bench press. Let's say close grip because then we have some momentum from the previous phase, right? This will be kind of more medium. And then we could have something else like an easy row or a, a barbell. What am I saying? Barbell bent over row. And this will be maybe a little bit lighter than we normally go. Right? That seems weird. Give me a minute. We get over here. Maybe we have some overhead pressing stuff. So maybe we did some push press, push jerk, depending on what we thought was important. Now we're going to have to probably do a push, a pull, and a leg movement. And we're probably going to have to have a priority system again. So here we might actually say, all right, now I'm doing my bench press, barbell bench press for my maximum strength phase, right? And that's going to be heavy because that's the first movement outside of that overhead press that I'm working on. I'm probably going to need to have a pull and a legs in there. So what I might say is, all right, now I'm going to have some parallel, oops, that one didn't work. Sorry about that. Parallel grip pull up here. And then what I might have is high bar squat here, which is going to be a light or squat. And this one's going to be more medium. Ah, see what I'm doing now? Getting kind of interesting. Day three, probably going to have either weightlifting movement 
uh, your choice depending on what you think is important for your athlete. Now I'm probably going to have to have some type of heavy pulling movement. So maybe we'll have something like a bent over row again, this time heavy, right? Then I'm probably going to have to have a more moderate uh, leg movement. So in this case could be any number of things, but let's just have some fun and say uh, uh, deadlift medium. And then I'm probably going to have a push in here at the end. Could be something like close grip bench. Oops, I'm putting parentheses around things I don't need to. Could, actually, it could just be, um, yeah, close grip bench. And this will be light. So this progression will generally be for the heavy things that we do. And then you can imagine taking it down a couple percentage points for everything that's meant to be heavy or light. See what I'm saying here? So this would be a good example of progression. Now, again, this is just meant to be as an example. You are going to have a lot of inter-individual variability in how you choose these exercises and the number of days per week based on the individual schedule and the individual's needs. And that's perfectly okay. But we can see a bit of a progression here as we go, right? So we went from our hypertrophy movements to our like metabolite movements to some of our basic strength movements. And now we're basically working in our maximum strength. So like our bench over rows and our parallel pull-ups are probably gonna be the strongest back movements we can do. Our medium grip benches and our close grip benches are probably gonna be some of the strongest push movements that we do. Our weightlifting movements are gonna be our power movements for this phase. We have push presses and then we have things like low bar squats, high bar squats and deadlifts for this phase, right? So you can kind of see that we've made some good choices. We kind of have a progression along the way. And then last but not least, power and speed. Really, this is going to be so much individual variation here. And in some cases, you might actually go down to like two days per week, depending on where you are in that phase. So if we look at this one on our plan, right, this power and speed, um, is still part of the specific prep phase. So they might not be doing a ton, a ton, a ton of direct power and speed stuff to the point where you actually have to take their volume down to abysmally low. But here we might start to introduce more plyometric stuff and reinforce a lot of their techniques. So like their sprinting techniques, their sporting techniques, stuff like that. I don't want to go into too much detail on the power and speed, but you can imagine it will follow a very, very similar progression. Our Weight training, our weightlifting stuff will probably be the, one of the big components. We'll see a big component of plyometric exercise, and then we'll also see more speed, agility, change of direction kind of stuff. And then our strength training stuff will be kind of on the back end. So if you've watched the um, uh, video where we outline which things come first, right, we would see anything that's pure power, so anything that's just body weight, and we're trying to move as fast as humanly possible, that's going to come first in the session. Next would be things like our weightlifting movements or things that are done with resistance but meant to be explosive. And then last would be any of our strength movements. So that would be kind of the last thing. Whereas before all of our strength movements were first until we got to this phase when we had some weightlifting stuff, right? Uh, over here, we're going to see plyometrics, weightlifting, and then kind of a little peppering of uh, strength training stuff just to maintain maximal strength characteristics as we go. Makes sense. So, you know, what I would say is just have some fun and experiment a little bit with yourself. It's uh, It seems like such a silly thing, but I can tell you I have made a lot of progress in my personal, for myself, for my training progression, and with a lot of my clients really starting to think about these things a little bit more critically. So let's just kind of review some of the big bullet points, right? Exercise selection matches the goal of the training phase. You should be picking exercises that allow them to express what you're trying to achieve, right? So for power and speed, you have to pick exercises which allow them to either be really, really explosive or move as fast as possible, right? So uh, for example, a low bar squat and a, a conventional deadlift might not be the best choices for those in terms of movement speed, but they might be just enough needed to maintain muscle mass and maximum strength hitting kind of maintenance volumes for those things, right? But the rest of the session should really be focused on power and speed stuff. Likewise, if you're doing power and maximum power, I can't talk. If you're doing maximal strength training, you should pick exercises which allow you to express things like maximal strength. So like our high bar squats, our low bar squats, our conventional deadlifts, our flat, medium grip, like competition style bench presses, those are probably gonna be the best bangs for our buck. Can you use variants within there? Sure, as long as they are not ones that really, really compromise your ability to exert maximal force, right? So things, again, like dumbbell benches might not be good. Um, 
close stance squats might not be good, you know, like even, even front squats might not be good because it's just an inherently lighter exercise. Now, if you're a weightlifter, you can make a case for that, right? So again, that always comes back to needs analysis. Basic strength is sort of that transition where we've gone from really, really big um, range of motion, lots and lots of muscle activation, and now we're making a switch and we're saying, now I'm, I'm still doing some of that, but I'm really starting to emphasize the force generating characteristics. This is where we see a big transition away from things like machines and cables and even dumbbells to some extent. And we see a big transition towards barbell, compound, bilateral movements. So when we get over here in hypertrophy, we have a lot of choices. That's the fun part about hypertrophy, right? Your exercise selection list is pretty large. However, again, the bulk of those things should be our free weight movements, barbell, dumbbell, bilateral, and then if we want to add some fun, sexy ones along the way, this is probably the best time. And I would say probably the metabolite phase, if if you're doing that, which you may not, is probably the time where you get to have the most fun, sexy time with exercise selection. But what you also want to consider is that progression, right? So we said it should match the goal. We also want to phase potentiate. So we don't want to just pick completely variable exercises across each board. They should be progressing towards um, something. And generally, as we move from far away in competition, like our general preparatory phase, as we move towards the competitive phase, we are generally moving from lower intensity exercises to higher ones. So for our strength training, that will usually mean like easier movements to harder, heavier movements, or if we're looking at uh, movement speed, faster, more explosive movements as well. We also want to consider heavy light. This is where I think a lot of people fall short. It's okay, especially on when you have certain splits, like three or four day splits, to not always make everything super, super crazy heavy. It's perfectly okay to stimulate SRA and recovery by having a light day in there every now and again. And the best way to do that is by either using a light exercise variant, reducing the total number of sets performed on that exercise, or just reducing the load. So it's just not super, super heavy. The, rel uh, the relative effort's not super, super high. There are days that are meant to be overloading. There are days that are meant to be recovery stimulating, and that's perfectly okay. And then number four is where I would say kind of requires the most thought in terms of doing this in the most logical and creative way possible, but carrying a little bit of momentum. So we know that variation is good. We know that not enough variation can lead to plateauing, right? So the, what we want to try and figure out is, can I smoothly make transitions across these phases as I go? And the way that I like to do that, and I know Mike uh, has talked about this too, is by using sort of our lighter variations or our downsets as good opportunities to add an exercise variant that we might be using down the road, right? So if we know high bar squats are coming, it's probably a good idea to sneak them in somewhere, even if the emphasis was not high bar squats for our quad day. So in this one, we said hack squats and leg presses were getting the job done, and that's fine, right? But we still found a way to get it in there, so that way we can actually carry it over and keep using it. And then we might even keep using it over here in this maximal strength phase, right? So in this case, we snuck it into this hypertrophy phase, we trained it on this basic strength phase, and then it actually stuck around even in this maximal strength phase. So by the time they get to this maximal strength phase, right, they have generated some momentum, and now they should be able to express a crap load of force in that high bar squat. Whereas if you had just introduced a high bar squat or just introduced a low bar squat in the maximum strength phase, it's going to be awkward the first week or two. And that's normal. We experience that every time we add a new exercise variant or one that we haven't done in a while, right? Think about like uh, when you do like a, uh, what's it called? The split squat, right? The Romanian split squat or whatever, where you have one foot elevated and you do like a lunging movement. When you do those, like your butt is sore for like four weeks. Why? Because it's so novel right? You only have to do like one or two sets and you're completely wrecked and it's awkward. So we don't want that necessarily when we're trying to express things like force and power output. So I hope this made sense. If you guys enjoyed watching me do this, I know it's, it's an hour of me clicking on Excel, but if you enjoyed watching me do this, I'd be glad to do some more examples. Please post them up in the RP Plus, uh, RPU forums, and I'll be glad to do some more of these under some different conditions. So this was just kind of a very generic one, right? We've been looking at this same one for a while now. Um, 
And I just wanted to show kind of a really simple way of progressing this so that you can at least get going. Now, obviously, there's a lot of detail work that has to be fleshed out, but that's up to you and your individual client and personal needs. This is just meant to kind of get you up and running and going with how to start programming an annual plan. So I hope you liked it. Again, if you have questions or if you want to see me do more of these or more sample progressions or different sports, I'll be happy to do this and hopefully I'll have less interruptions next time. <laughs> Excuse me, I hope you guys enjoyed RP Plus RPU. I have a blast making these. Please let me know if you want more. 